Hi there, this is Clint, and we had a comment on a YouTube video asking for a demonstration as to how do we provide private access to a database such as Cassandra. Well, I'm going to use Postgres because that's what I have access to and familiarity with it. I'm going to use a ZD tunneling application. In my case, I use Windows, so it'll be the ZD desktop edge for Windows, which looks like this. Notice my dev.client has seven services. I'm going to use that to provide on, uh, ingress onto the ZD overlay fabric which will attach to the ZD Edge router, which is deployed out in Amazon in my case. So there is a listening hole through the firewall for the Edge router, but only for the Edge router, not for Postgres. So this is port 443, or in my case, 8442. Um, and then that ZD Edge router will connect to the Postgres server, creating the Zero Trust connection. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, as is usual, I will have a cheat sheet running and I have a terminal. Now it's time for the terminal. In the lower left-hand corner, I'm going to run Docker. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. So it, you can see I've already run a, a Docker command, docker ps minus a, I have nothing running. So what I need to do is I need to run Docker. I need to give it a name because that's what I wanna do. And then I want to give it a username and password and I need to expose port 5432 so that Docker will be available or so that Postgres will be available from this particular machine. So if I do a psql minus h localhost dash u postgres, you'll see I'm able to connect to localhost postgres, p-o-s-t gress. All right, that's what you would expect since I'm running on this local machine. Fantastic. So now let's go ahead and set up the zero trust overlay. First thing we need to do is we need to find the name of our edge router. Uh, Z edge list edge routers, let's spell it right. And you'll see my edge router is named uh, IP 172314264 edge router. So right now, this edge router has an attribute of public. But when you use the quick start, the edge router will also come with an identity. So if we were to list our identities and uh, give limit of none so that it doesn't um, paginate us, pipe into grep for just the name of the edge router, 172, uh, ZD edge list identities, limit none. That should have worked. What is happening? Let's give us one more try before this video. Oh yeah, what did we spell it wrong? Identities, it's always the case. All right, now we'll pipe that in the grep for IP172. And you'll see, I've actually run this once before and forgot to remove this uh, role attribute, but uh, it has an attribute of private Postgres servers. And we're gonna use that private Postgres servers in our service policy here in a second. So first thing we wanna do is go ahead and create the configuration, which is used for the host. Um, this is one down here, look, 172.31.50.50. That is where we want our traffic to go. One quick note about using Amazon if you are deploying into a private VPC, you'll have firewall rules that you'll have to edit. So if you are like me and you have a security group on your individual private Postgres server, you'll wanna add port 5432. I've already added 22 and 80 so I could SSH there and do another demo, but in this case, we're using 5432. So if we were to go back to the diagram, realistically, there is another firewall sitting right here between virtual machine one in the light orange and virtual machine two in the dark orange. You wanna make sure that port is open, otherwise uh, traffic can't be routed and you can't establish your connection. So we've created our Postgres, uh, actually we haven't created it yet. Let's go ahead and create our config. That's the first config that we need. That's the host or the binding side. Now we need a intercept or a client side config. And so this is going to be uh, providing a DNS name private.postgres.zd. So I'll go ahead and make that config. Now we need to knit those two configs together using a service. So we issue create service. We're going to give it a name of private Postgres, give it the two configs that we want, and that's great. Everything works. So far, none of that matters because we have not given a, a service policy. So now we want to give a couple of service policies. And the first policy we want to give is access for my clients. 
So I'm going to use create service policy. I'm going to call it private Postgres binding. It's going to be a bind policy. It's going to allow the service named private Postgres and any attribute or any uh, endpoint with the attribute of private Postgres service is able to connect. Now, when I do that, if I'm quick enough, you'll see my seven should turn to an eight here momentarily because I've just given my, oh, sorry, that's the servers. So it won't turn to seven yet. I've got to make the clients. Let's do the same exact thing. This was the bind policy, not a dial policy. The dial policy is what grants clients access. So let's go ahead and do that. And now I'll flip back over and you'll see my seven turned to an eight. If I were to click in here, you will see I now have uh, private.postgres.zd is available to me. All right, we're almost done. Um, we have Postgres running, we've proved Postgres runs, and now on my local machine here, I should be able to do a reverse search for psql to uh, the host named private.postgres.zd and the username Postgres. When I do this, you see it prompts me for a password, P-O-S-T-G-R-E-S, uh, and I have connected securely from my local computer on my home network uh, all the way. In fact, I'm using Windows Subsystem for Linux. So uh, if you are also using Windows Subsystem for Linux, one thing to note is I did edit my resolve.conf so that it uses the DNS server provided by the ZD Desktop Edge for Windows here. Um, and if you don't do that, your WSL may or may not work. Uh, getting WSL work, that's up to you. <laughs> but this is how I, um, I put the name resolver first and that's how it will work for me in, in, um, in Linux land in WSL. Now we could do one more thing, which is if we were to take a ZD edge tunnel and place it on the local machine, we actually don't need the firewall hole opened anymore. So I've already done that. You can see I can run ZD edge tunnel run minus I AWS private dot JSON. If I were to do this uh, as sudo, okay, now you can see my ZD edge tunnel is running down here. Well, I have to deauthorize my, my router identity because it currently is authorized to, um, to host or to bind the Postgres server. But let's go ahead and turn that off. And I think that would do it. So let's list the identities again. Yeah, now you see I have no role attributes for this uh, router. Now the traffic should land down here at the, um, at the ZD Edge tunnel. So we go up and you see I've already received an incoming connection. Type in Postgres and you can see I can connect again. But let's just put the cherry on top and go back to Amazon here. And let's remove this rule that we had that allowed port uh, 5432 through. Go ahead and save those rules. Come back here in Amazon land. If I were to do my reverse search for PSQL, no, not Docker, uh, PSQL. I haven't run it in here. Okay, well, it's fantastic. Let's just do it the hard way, type it all in. And then what was this IP address? Anybody remember out there? It's uh, 172, 172.31.50.50. You can see I can no longer attach to the SQL server, even from within my VPC now. So I have no firewalls open in my VPC on this one. And yet I'm still able to connect because I ran the ZD edge tunnel. Let's connect one more time and see that connection happen. Postgres. And now you can see I'm still connected to the Postgres server, even though I now have another firewall in place on this W uh, uh, virtual machine two that was not um, closed before, the firewall is now closed. So we've added a ZD edge tunnel out here running next to Postgres. It has connected to this edge router and that has provided us the on-ramp to the ZD fabric. Uh, pretty cool stuff. That's uh, Postgres instead of Cassandra. Hopefully that's good enough for the YouTube comment. And that, uh, that's the demo for now. We'll see you next time.